You've built a multi-million dollar business, and you've got to be proud of where you are. Yeah, and then there's like right behind that veneer, it's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> your greatest fear is not that your business is going to fail, it's that you're going to let all these people down. And you can't take the mystery out of being an entrepreneur. You can't take it away. It's what fuels us. I would love for these guys to hear about like your background. You've started this company that is just on fire. Well, actually it's not on fire because it keeps things from getting on fire, but that's a whole <laughs> yeah. other conversation. But you know, you've got a young family, beautiful family, you're well grounded in your values and your beliefs. And here you are just working your tail off in a blue collar job. And you have this idea to start a business, but tell these guys your story. Tell them your background. Like, you know, the stories I've heard about, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning and the wind's blowing 80 miles an hour and you're hanging sideways from a pole <laughs> welding like some heavy piece of metal. I started my first business when I was 18 years old. I got into construction when I was a kid. My dad was a carpenter and I got into it when I was 13 years old. I was homeschooled my whole life and uh, I was so ready to make money I would do school at night so I could work in the day. You know hence I start I got I figured out construction I started my business at 18. Fast forward market the mar right at the market crash I was like 22 making a bunch of money lost everything you know went through that lost a home got really discouraged kind of in that my dad uh, my dad was also going through some tough times ended up going to the oil field and he told me he's like man you can get over here and you can make some serious money and he's like you should go to welding school he's like get certified and uh and then come over here and weld and i'm like wow that sounds like a great idea and so i i i got in school and probably within a, a couple of weeks my instructor he's like man you're you know what you're doing. He's like, you should just certify and, and get going. I think within three months I was certified, and like I I could I could taste taste the money. You know, I'm like I'm gonna get to the oil fields. I'm gonna start making some money. So I put together a welding truck and got certified. And I just head to North Dakota. Didn't know who I was gonna work for. Just like I'm like I'm going. You know. And so I moved over to North Dakota. I had a buddy that had a house over there, and I move in with him. And I start I start uh, trying to get you know, on with all these companies. Nobody wanted to hire me. Finally, this lady, she was running a bunch of rigs and she's like, man, I need somebody. So she gave me a shot. And so um, I went to work for this lady and I got in the oil field and that was it. I mean, I was making, I think I was making 70, 80 bucks an hour working for those guys. And uh, I was like, man, this is, this is great. So I started making money doing that. And uh, that was the first part of the boom. And then the market crashed and then I was out. And then I went back to construction for a little while. During that time, I got married. Um, I, I actually went on a missions trip uh, to Peru and uh, on a fluke deal with my dad. And uh, I met my wife. And uh, she didn't speak English, and I didn't speak Spanish when I met her. She only she only spoke Spanish. And uh, I don't even know how to tell you the story, but got married. And oil fields kind of kicked off again, and so I said, "Hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to head back there and, and go to work." So we moved to Texas. That's kind of where I started Western Welder. I uh, I was working like a dog, and uh, one one day I uh, I told my wife, "Like, hey, I want to get this shirt made." And it was I had I looked it was actually I was at a stop stoplight, and I looked at my arm. I got all these burns on my arm. I mean, I look like I'm almost like a little junkie over here. And I just said, you know what? I need to make a, a shirt that covers one side of my arm here. So I had this idea of like a leather sleeve. And so I told my wife about it. She's like, yeah. She's like, I, I know somebody that can make that. And so uh, we were in Peru, and somebody makes me this shirt. And I got this, you know, this whole leather sleeve and kind of protects the chest. Uh, next thing you know, all my buddies are like, wow, that's, that's freaking cool. Uh, they all wanted one. And I was like, oh, shit, you know. Maybe we should make these. So I told my wife, you know, we better start making some clothes. And so I made, I think I, her neighbor, her neighbor was a seamstress. We're like, let's make a hundred of these things. So we made a hundred of them and uh, all my friends wanted one. You know, it was like, you know, every, everybody, I, I was on a couple of forums uh, on, on Facebook too. And everybody was like really interested in them. Next thing you know, we get them here and it was all made with the wrong material. Oh no. And so the whole thing, I mean, I think I spent like six grand on it. And they showed up and like, immediately I knew it. And I was like, these are garbage. I threw the whole order away. Oh, no. <laughs> it was so frustrating. It, it opened the door to figure out more products. 
and uh, I launched a shirt. It was on just kind of a fluke deal. I'm like, you know what? I was I, so we were making these shirts with these leather sleeves, and I was like, you know what? Just make me another shirt, a work shirt. I want black, a black shirt with uh, white stitching. And dude, that was that was the fire, man. It was like, I mean, they, people started calling that the pipeline or tuxedo. Oh wow! Yeah, seriously. That's wild. Well. Yeah, and and when that shirt, when when people saw that shirt, man, it, it, and it's still, it's like, I mean, we sell it like freaking crazy. Yeah. How many years ago did you start Western Welder? I started it in 2017. Okay, so yeah. on, uh, you know what? I got my EIN on uh, um, Valentine's Day. So February 14th, 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. So today, that's a love story. Baby. Yeah, it is a love story. <laughs> yeah. It is. So it's a love hate story. <laughs> <laughs> so today, you know, multi million dollar company, you're just jamming the world, leveraging the the d to c model yeah. selling direct to consumers yeah. you know between all the social platforms you know people have great access are able to find you one of the things jordan i love about your business is you've refined and iterated the product that you started with but in a lot of ways the product that you're having great success with today is the same product you started with mm -hmm. but like when i go online you have like 117 different colors, right? Not really, but <laughs> yeah. you got a lot Almost. of colors. You got a lot of colors, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, you've, you've got some other products that you sell besides mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just the, the shirt. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a cool wallet that I really want one of that's got a good Western Welder logo on it. But tell us a little bit, I mean, today you're selling direct, your revenue's good, you're making a profit. Um, you know, great story of, you know, you and your, your sweet wife started this business together and, you know, forever, I know it's been the two of you, but just in the last few months, you've kind of taken your first big leap and uh, brought on your first employee. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, well, it, not, I guess I wouldn't say my first employee, but first big hire. First big hire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so today, you know, as you look at the, the business and you look at where you are, um, you've got to be proud of where you are. Yeah, and then there's like right behind that veneer, it's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so te yeah, I mean, so tell tell us a little bit about, you know, it's so funny. Every entrepreneur has the same, oh shit. So um, tell us what's behind the veneer. Tell us about the, oh shit. Like what, you know, the business is successful. It's profitable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you run it leanly, but it continues to grow. The last few years have been remarkable f for you. When you think about kind of that, oh shit, um, what is that? What's, what's kind of behind the business that gives you concern? And then, yeah. you know, is it that you're concerned about the business or you're just really eager to take this thing to the moon? Right. Yeah. Well... I'm eager to take it to the moon. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That and, and it, in my heart, I don't know if it's going to take two years or if it's going to take twenty years, but I'm on that road. You know. Yeah. That's that. That's what's honestly. It's like I just I just feel it. I know it's. I know this is going to be a, a a name one day. You yeah. Know? I know that 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 logo. I mean, brother, I, I it's just, a, it's a name right now. Well, thank you. No, I mean it is a name. Yeah. yeah. I mean it's a name. I, I have the great privilege of getting to see many different companies and hear about people's dreams and visions. But I mean, Western Welder is a brand. I mean, it's a brand. You have a product. Um, you know, you're deep into seven figures. Mm -hmm. You're you're you know supporting your family from it. So um, there's a lot of things that come along with different businesses when they're in different stages. Mm -hmm. And you know, in our and the way we look at business and, and our, you know, epic experience is we look at it in four different stages. Hmm. And, you know, stage one is just an eager entrepreneur. Stage yeah. one is exactly where you were, um, you know, in 2017. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll tell you, a lot of people don't move out of stage one. So hmm. you're in stage two hmm. where, you know, you have a business that's really rocking and rolling. Yeah. And your thought process right now is how do you make it? A great enterprise yeah how do you make it an enterprise how do you make it more than a business so um, right. give us a little bit of an idea is it working capital is it cash flow is it supply chain where are the pain points in the business yes, right yes, now that's yes. what we want to understand oh man I'll, I'll lay it out buddy so it's day one it's been capital day one and 
every single day until now is capital. I have, I have, I have uh, a pile of. So I just want to clarify for these guys that you're selling millions of dollars, yeah. you're making a profit, yeah. But in order to grow, you need capital, more money. capital is king. Yeah, yeah. Got to keep stoking that fire, man. Got to keep stoking the fire. You know, so yeah, so obviously, I'm imagining my e-commerce side over here and where I've been wanting to go is wholesale. Um, so e-commerce, it's just, it's just been growing like crazy. We've been so growing. So e-commerce, direct to consumer, yep. high margin. Yep. You're, you're shipping the product out yourself yes. yep. or we're are using a third party distributor. Yep. yep. But we, we use pretty much agencies and everything. Okay. So three PLs, yep. Yep. getting your product out there. So host, it, what does wholesale look like? Is that going into Bass Pro, Cabela's, Dix? It's it's um, well. L l let me let me explain a little bit before, and then I'll get into that. So with e-commerce, it's just constantly fueling it. You know, and the thing is, th this is what I've realized. It's like I mean, I get calls. This is part of my anxiety. I've been I've been I've been through the last few weeks have been like hell with anxiety. Yeah. And I, the I and mean, I just I, want to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. No, You've no. got a successful profitable emerging growing business but there's still big hurdles and anxiety yeah, yeah, yeah. so quite candidly you probably had less anxiety when you first got started yeah, <laughs> yeah. but now you've got a tiger by the tail yeah yeah it feels like you know what i feel like i always tell people this i feel like indiana jones with the golden idol running from the rock <laughs> <laughs> seriously man seriously and that rock is my cash flow dude it's like I, I mean I got this thing, I got this this you know, this a beautiful brand, but it's like I mean the cash flow is behind me and it's like if I if I make one bad move, it's gonna hurt me. And the thing I've come to realize, I mean I, I get calls probably six to ten times a day from financers. Yep. And they're all the same. Yeah. MCAs, term loans, lines of credit, and it's all the same shit, it's MCAs. Yeah. Merchant, so, merchant cash advance. So That's super, it. super high interest rate. Not favorable terms, yeah, yeah, and and uh, but they're willing to give you some money if you can pay them back, yeah, in short order with strong interest. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not not a very uh, good plan for trying to grow an emerging business. Well, it's like as long as I've been building this thing, I've imagined myself in a Cessna trying to get above the clouds, and it's just like ee! I'm like it's just so. So damn hard. Yeah. And it's like, I need, I need to be in a, in a, there's something I'm not seeing that I need. That's yeah. what I feel like. You know, it's funny. You talk about being in a Cessna in the clouds because um, I'm a pilot and I love to fly. Wow. And, um, you know, the, any pilot in the world will tell you that your friend is altitude. Mm -hmm. So the higher you get, um, really, the more, safer the, the safer you are. And uh, especially in a Cessna, because yeah. that thing will float down to the ground forever. So you've got that going for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not. Yeah. 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 Now yeah. I'm going to tell you, when a jet loses its engines, yeah, it doesn't have very far to go. Right. Right. I mean, it doesn't float. It's a heavier aircraft. Right. You've got some different dynamics going yeah. on. Yeah. Physics come into play. So I love your Cessna analogy. So you're just continuing, continuing to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, your business model's proven. Yeah. You've almost proven, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just going based off conversations you've shared with me. The more money you're willing to pour into marketing, yeah. the more money you're able to pour into inventory, mm -hmm. the bigger your sales are gonna be. Yeah. Is that the is that the math? Yeah, yeah. It's like a dial. You just spend more money and it, it just it just increases. Well, it's kinda like it's kinda like stepping on the gas in your car. If you want you gotta spend you gotta you gotta give more gas if you want to go faster. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah. But okay. So where's this? Tell tell me. Anybody that's ever been an entrepreneur and built a business understands what fear and anxiety is. Yeah. Because it is real. Oh man. So so what is it that causes you the most concern about the business? Is it is okay. it the lack of opportunity to grow, or is it something that could fundamentally challenge the business overall? Your product's brilliant. People love your product. Yeah. I've personally read your reviews online. These people are raving fans. Mm -hmm. I mean these. This shirt that you've built, which primarily you built for welders as a work shirt, yeah, it's a Friday, it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday yeah. night going out dancing shirt, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, guys put this thing on with pride. I know I've got one. I've got yeah. a blue one with orange stitch. I mean, anytime I wear it, people are asking me about it. So yeah. the product 
you don't have a product problem. Yeah. People love your product. Yeah. So what's what's keeping you up? What's the fear? Help us understand that. Okay, so e-commerce, that's that feels like it's like barely under control. Well, uh, I threw a, a mutual contact. Uh, his name is Cody Lever. He runs the Cowboy Channel. Uh, he wanted me to market on his channel, and he's like, gets me on a call, gets me on a Zoom call, and he's like, hey, you got a freaking amazing product. He's like, he's like, are you in retail? And uh, I'm like, no, just online. And he's like, what? He's like, you got to meet Lewis. And I'm like, who's Lewis? And he's like, Lewis is the man in Western apparel. <clears throat> his name's Lewis Russo. Uh, he's been in apparel since 1975. Uh, he worked for Wrangler for 21 years. He's the he was the vice president of Wrangler for 21 years. After after Wrangler, he was vice president of Justin Boots for 20 for 14 years, and then um, after that, he was senior vice president of Huey Brands, and which is another emerging brand. And um, I get on the call with the guy, and he's like, dude. He told this is the words he's told me. He's like he's like you got lightning in a bottle, and he's like, um, well, what do you want to do? And I mean, you know, we talked for a while, and I was like, dude, I said, you know what? I, I mean, I know that this brand is going to be a brand brand, you know. And he's like, well, he's like, um, I mean, he's like, I he's like, I'd like to be a part of it, you know. And so um, <laughs> I fly him up to Kalispell. And uh, he spent with me, spent a week up up here with me, and went through all my financials and, and looked at everything. And this guy's he's he's 70 years old, and uh, he told me he's like, this is my last hurrah. And this guy is something else. This guy is something else. He he signed the deal with uh, with Wrangler, so at every PBR rodeo, they're the only ones that have Wrangler shirts on. He signed that deal. The 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 brand 20X. Yep. That he made that. Wow. He's Louis Russo is something else. Like I, I cannot Did even. Did he get believe. to do any work with George Strait? No, he they they rope together. They're buddies. Yeah, they're buddies. Okay. It, actually, um, was it the Rose Palace? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they they rope together the Rose Palace. That's cool. So yeah. I think that's in Tyler, Texas. Yeah. Yeah, that is in Tyler, Texas. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Uh, but Louis Russo, and he made cowboy cuts what they are. Wow. He made cowboy cuts with air. That's the, he, All Lewis, right, so I want to stop you for a okay, second. Yeah. So one of the things that, that we love to talk about within the Epic experience and just um, with entrepreneurs in general mm -hmm. is that there is absolutely nothing more important when you're building a business than surrounding yourself with extraordinary, experienced, capable, driven Smart people. people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so Lewis is on your team now. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah, let me get to it. <laughs> Yes. Wow. Lewis, dude, you know what? Okay, this is, I, I'm going to tell you guys this. I hope this is on TV. <laughs> Lewis has been working for me since April 15th, and I haven't paid him a dime. Okay. Well, and, and I'm going to. We, by, the way, the, by the way, that's an unbelievable pay plan. <laughs> That's hey, a, hey! We 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 te know. we teach people, we teach people the epic experience how to create amazing pay plans, <laughs> and you just authored a new one. So you just don't pay them a dime. Okay. All right. This is no, good. no, no. Trust me. Trust me. It's all gonna work out. It's all gonna work out. <laughs> I, I bet it is. I bet it I is. Bet it is. <laughs> I bet it is. No, is, no. Is Lewis losing weight or is he still eating? No, How's his no. family? Lu Lewis. Lewis is Lewis is a winner, dude. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis is doing well. Lewis is so done Lewis really is helping you. Lewis is Lu involved Lu in this your is business because of you. This is what Lewis told me. He's like, he's like, you're my protege. Yeah. He's like, this is you said. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, you got me for five years. Wow. Yeah. He's like, you got me for five years, and we've we've structured. I got to ask you a question. Yeah. So I'm an emotional guy. I am too, man. I love business because I love people. Man, um, yeah. I love business because I love to fall in love with businesses. This guy, you meet him, you fly him up, he mm -hmm. spends a week with you. Yeah. He's 70 years old. Mm -hmm. He tells you this is his last rodeo. Yeah. He tells you that he wants you to be his protege, and you haven't paid the guy in, in a long time, right? Did that just, like, grab your heart, man? Oh, God, dude. Dude, I've called the guy drunk. I've called the guy drunk, like, Lewis, 
Have I'm, you called him sober? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Dude, dude, this, this honestly, like, it, it, it is. Okay, this is part of my anxiety, though. This is part of my yeah. anxiety is because, it, it, it like, I, it's like I, I feel like again, I got this little website business, it's doing three million, and 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 Lewis. So I wasn't going to bring up numbers, but this little business that oh, you I'm started, sorry, yeah, yeah, you yeah. were climbing up poles, you had this vision, yeah, arms all burn up, you start yeah. this company on your own, yeah. You know, great margins, highly profitable. You're doing three million in revenue. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Thanks. All right, so let's talk more about Lewis. Yeah. So, anyway, Lewis, you know, Lu and Lu I man, I love Lewis. I love Lewis, man. I bet. Lu like, I really do, man. Like he is so. so yeah, tell I just us where can't the even believe. Tell us where the anxieties, the the anxiety. Okay. 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 So check this out. I got Lewis. Yep. I've got f four of the biggest salespeople in the industry on my team because of Lewis. Yeah. I've got a designer, well, two designers from Justin Boots working on my team. I've got uh, a forecaster from Justin Boots working on my team. I've got, I, I mean, I've got a massive team now because of Lewis. Wow. And, and we, we just, I, I want to show you the catalog we've put together. It I is, can't wait to see it. And, and we're going to market, and this is, the, okay, so check this out. Going this to the is, wholesale market. Yes. We're going to so, wholesale. In, so let's in, talk about what that means weeks. because that when you talk about cash flow yeah. and you talk about working capital yeah. and you talk about inventory yeah. <laughs> and you talk about all of those things, <laughs> yeah. the minute you decide to move into wholesale yeah. and you're going to go swing the, the big bat and you're swinging for the fences, all the economics change, all the models change, yeah. and now I, there, there's a lot more cash required. Because i got to be the bank. <laughs> you got to be the bank. So... Yeah. Yeah. Is that the concern? You know, you know what I feel like. I feel like I, I. It's like I'm. Everybody's on stage and everybody's getting ready for the big show, and that that's me. Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm. I don't feel like I'm the guy to do this. Yeah. I feel like I'm. I. I mean, I. I. I I'm not confident. Yeah. I struggle with. I'm. I feel like honestly inside, I'm pretty insecure. I've never come from money. I've never. I don't really know how money works completely. Um, I, I don't feel like I'm the guy to do this. Yeah. And I feel. I feel like I'm going to let everybody down. Yeah. That's my fear. That's yeah. my fear. Yeah. You know? So let me let me let me give you a little kind of feedback on that. Um, you and I've gotten to know each other a little bit. Yeah. Um, we've we've certainly, you know, had some times that we've been able to reveal our hearts to each other. And uh, hey, I love you, dude. I love you too. <laughs> and so, um, and I really do. I love your heart. I love what you stand for. And I got to tell you, there are so many entrepreneurs in this world. Um, and, and when I say entrepreneurs, I don't mean people that are running startups and $3 million businesses. I mean people all the way from startups to multi-billion dollar businesses that have the same fear, the same anxiety, the hmm. same concern that you have. And it's like, man... I don't feel adequate to do this. And, and the thing that, um, in your case, that I love the most is that your greatest fear is not that your business is going to fail. It's that you're going to let all these people down, right? And so, um, you know, Lewis has been instrumental in your business in the past how many months? Since, uh, since the beginning of April. Beginning of April. So, I mean, we're talking... You've got 90, 120 days, yeah. you know, under your belt of, of, of having Lewis on the team. All these transformational things are happening. So you clearly had the knowledge to start your business. You were inspired. Lewis came along with a lot of knowledge. And I'm telling you, where knowledge and inspiration meet is where transformation happens. Hmm. And that's what's happening in your business. If you ever meet an emerging, thriving passionate entrepreneur and they tell you they don't have an element of fear and anxiety they're just not being honest they're just not being honest and um, sometimes it comes from places that they need to be concerned um, and then sometimes it comes from places like yours where you're like man I just don't want to let anybody down you know this is an opportunity of a lifetime so let's talk a little bit about 
where you feel inadequate. You've, you've surrounded yourself with uh, a team of people. Yeah. Um, and rather it be supply chain, rather it be capital, rather it be your own experience as, as uh, not being a fully trained leader, which by the way, no leader is ever fully trained. It's a journey. It's a mission for life. Um, what is it that you're sitting here going, man, I'm about to go out on stage. Yeah. I've got all the lights. I've got all the instruments. I've got the most amazing musicians I could ever have that are going to be next to me playing. What is it that is really challenging you of wondering if you're, in, you're adequate enough to go out and be the star of the show with an amazing group of people around you? What is that? Well, I, I, I mean, obviously, like I've said before, I, and it's not only this. It's funny. You told me this when we were hanging out the other night. It's like he's like you're like it's capital, but it's not just cap. It's not capital. Right. It's capital, but it's not capital. Is what I feel like. Yeah, yeah. It's. Ca I mean, obviously, like let's say let's say I had two million bucks in the bank, I'd be feeling probably a lot more secure than I'm feeling right now. But yeah, at the same point, I just know that 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 two million dollars very shortly. It's gonna look a lot, really small. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and so I, I don't, f I don't, so, I don't so, know. So what from it a is. cash perspective, <coughs> you're gonna get smaller before you get bigger, right? Yeah. You're yeah. gonna get. There's gonna be constraints. You don't. Your your question, and I know, I know this is your question because we talked a little bit about it. Of man, I've got this business that I've spent the last five years building. Mm -hmm. We're doing three million dollars in revenue. We have great profit margins. I'm making good income. And I need some free cash flow. Mm -hmm. I need some money mm -hmm. so I can go take this thing to the next level. And do you feel like if you have that cash, that getting to the next place um, in the business, the next step, the next growth phase, do you feel like that if that comes together and happens, you have that capital? What, what is your, um, what's your gut tell you on the assurity of success of the business if the capital's there? I mean, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Man, you know what? I, I'm telling you what, dude. I got products in my brain for years. I do. I do. I have products in my brain for years. I got. I got more than more than enough. And it's like, in, and you know what's funny? It's like I work with so many manufacturers, and I'm. Gonna, I mean, I'm on the floor with them. I'm like, when I was meeting this manufacturer, he's can he can do a hundred thousand units a month. <clears throat> now is this a gentleman in Peru? In Peru, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is this is the third manufacturer lined up in Peru. Okay. And I mean it was it was midnight. My wife is ready to go to bed. He's got all the lights on, all of his employees around. They're all bored and me and him are just geeked out. Yeah. He wants to go. I want to go. Yeah. And it's like dude dude, I've and I, you know what's wild too? I mean I, this sounds arrogant. I have products that will change the market. I know it. Yeah. I know it. I know it. Well, you've already created a market. Yeah, right. I mean, you have created a market. Yes. There wasn't yes. anybody that was taking fashion, design, and and also the ability to create a safety product yeah. Yeah. and yeah. bring it to this unique emerging population of welders. Yeah. And these welders that you have today, they're they're loyal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do they buy more than one shirt? Oh, yeah. You know it's wild. It's like I. By the I've way, these shirts burn up sometimes, and they have to like buy another one. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a good model. It's pretty nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know what's wild though. It's like, like I, 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 I keep, I keep thinking, man, I pigeonholed myself, but I, I, I looked at. Um, so Lincoln Electric is pretty much the name in welding. They're the ones yep. that build welding machines. Yeah. Yep. And and they did um, in twenty one they did two point four billion dollars in sales. It's a pretty good sized business, yeah. you know. Uh, I mean, it's a huge industry, and yeah. obviously they're selling they're selling equipment, so it's yeah. going to be obviously high, obviously higher. Yeah, but it's a pretty still pretty good sized industry. Yeah, huge. Two point four billion. That's yeah, yeah, it's pretty good on one business. That's enormous. Yeah, and and how many people are making high end, high quality, custom, unique um, apparel items for that industry the way you are? You know, you know what's wild? It's like, I mean, there's there's little mom and pop companies all over that they'll make like one-off products, and they can't do production. Yeah. They don't they don't understand how to do production. And then there's other companies that are putting out products that nobody really wants to wear. Yeah. Because it's it's not. Um, 
It's, 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 this is something I told myself, like, again, when I started this, I saw this, is, it's fashion before function. Obviously, function is extremely important, but it's got to be fashionable. Yeah. It, fashion, it's the price of admission, right? It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's got, it's because, you know what, nobody wants, nobody wants to ride in an ugly car. Why do people buy rims for their car? Because they want to look good, dude. That's right. They want to look That's good. Right. That's right. They want a good look, look yeah. good. And That's it's why like, I and have I, this cowboy hat on right now. Okay. I know I, I know you don't know this, but I've got a bald head under this cowboy hat. You didn't even know that, did you? It's pretty fashionable, <laughs> baby, baby, huh? you're freaking beautiful. I mean, aren't I? <laughs> Good, good. Dude, good. dude you, you know, but I, I, have, I have realized that, though. It's like, the reason, the reason is because it's like, I've, I've hit a key in, in, like, all the hearts of these guys. Yeah. They want, they, they love you, they man. It's, it, it is, it is Do wild. you get, like, Instagram messages from these guys saying, my wife thinks that, like, I'm sexy because I'm wearing this Western dude, water shirt? Dude, I got to show you this review. I'll have to show you this review. It's, it's this really real. happens. No, like, seriously, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke, but he's like, so my wife stayed with me. I mean, we have, we have, yeah, we have. wasn't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have close to, like, 1,500. No, we have over 1,500 reviews. Uh, Five-star reviews. I looked at your Instagram the other day, and, like, You've got, I mean, you're at 100,000 people that are like just checking out what's going on with Western Welder. Yeah. So let's let's talk about, Jordan, let's talk about kind of what I know is authentically on your heart right now. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that you have just an unbelievable level of passion about this brand. You want to grow it. You're not looking to go out and sell it and get a paycheck and, and, and go, you know, float on a boat out in the ocean. Um, you want to see this thing be, be amazing. And I, I'd really like to talk a little bit about what the needs are in the business and, and really um, what you're looking for today. But before we do that, um, and this is a little bit of a setup, is if you had to look forward five years from now yeah and you looked at western welder five years from now um and 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 let's not just talk about revenue where do you see the brand um what do you see happening um i don't want you to lay out your plan for all the products that you want to release to the market but what do you see in five years what does it look like to you um tell us a little bit about that okay if everything went if i had my druthers right yep 35 to 50 million in revenue okay um, boot barn, cabinders, uh, mid states. Okay. And, and and mind you, we're we're actually on mid states. We're on mid states vendor list. We're ready to go with those guys. So if, I mean, if, if if all that happens, in all those guys, and then apart from the, the 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 big retailers, then we're in the welding supply stores. So I, I feel like my product is is very niche, but I feel like. Everybody will, everybody, if they see it, if they see it on the shelf, they'll be like, oh, I'd wear that. So, Jordan, is what I love is that you have this, you know, kind of product lineup in your head. Yeah. And I think about the biggest businesses in the world, and I think about Sergey Brin, Larry Page, Start and Google. Here they go. They create this little search engine that, you know, most people on earth use. Um, but they have come out with just countless products mm -hmm. since then and um and they have a neat story i know that it's interesting to compare you know your business to to their business but it's not that different they yeah. they went out and hired um a professional ceo that came in uh, a guy named eric schmidt that did just a fabulous job and 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 really helped them execute on their core business but also roll out a lot of different products and it makes me think a little bit about lewis and what he's doing mm -hmm. and how y'all are working together so when you look five years out, today you have a product that is proven, that people love. Um, you have uh, just done a great job with it, getting the consumers just excited about the product. Mm -hmm. but, but where do you see the product line being five years from now? And I don't want you to give all your secrets away. but I, got some, I got some secrets, buddy. Yeah, but, I, <laughs> I, but I'm guessing it's more than the shirt oh, yeah. that's out oh, today. Yeah. Uh, give, give us an idea. Is it, is it, is it more industrial um, or is it more fashion? Kind of where do you want to take the brand if you had your, you know. You know, I, I, I love work, you know, and I want to... I think that's where I'm, where I'm good. I love. I feel like I relate to those people. That's who I am, and 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 so we're we're actually creating um, a parent company. It's WW Brands. Yeah. 
And, we, and, and Lewis told me, he's like, he's like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what WD stands for. He's like, Western Welder's great. He's, and he told me about Did this. Did anybody else tell you that? That WW brands, it just didn't matter what it stood for? No. That's, that's just Lewis. Just okay. Lewis told me that. All right, good. He's like, he's like, we should call this WW brands. Okay. And so we're keeping that logo. And, uh, but, but I, I, you know, I'm telling you what, and, and I hope, I, I hope this isn't, well, I don't, I, I, this is just an idea, but working woman, man. I think. A working woman. Working woman. And I think this is fire. It's fire. It's the same brand. Yep. Working woman. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, and so this is one thing I figured out in, in, in doing what I've been doing for the last five years, I get countless women responding to me and said, do you have anything for women? There's just nothing out there for us. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, um, like, like 20 X, we could develop working woman. So let's talk a little bit about women um, in business and women as consumers of your product. Mm -hmm. um, you may or may not know this about me, but um, I've got just a, a unique trend in all the businesses that I've started in the past 20 years. Um, I've hired more female executives than I have males. Hmm. And, um, wow. and I, love, I love working with women. Hmm. Um, I love their creativity. Um, I certainly love their, their passion for business um, and how detail-oriented they are. And I could go on forever. But as you think about positioning your business to have a product lineup for women, I have to imagine that you're also thinking about bringing some females on your team, bringing them into your business, and letting them help you obviously scale this thing to the moon. Is that something that's kind of been on your mind? A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, honestly, honestly, like I feel like if I could figure out how to the game, the game inside the game, right? It's the game behind the game. If I could figure out the game behind the game in capital and ha having people around me, I, pff, let's roll, dude. Okay, so I've, let's... I've, I mean, I, dude, I've got, I've got like three other brands. Yeah. Brands. All right, let's slow down now. We no, got to... I, I, I know, I know. Let's I know, stick I with this WW. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in. I'm just saying. I'm just I'm saying. I'm in. I'm in. I, I'm with you. But let's talk a little bit about you... You've got this capital thing to figure out. Yeah. By the way, every business, every business operator in the world, the number one maze in business <laughs> is money, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, literally, if you look at, at, at the Epic Experience, our logo is a maze, and it really represents the maze of entrepreneurialism, wow. and most of that maze is money, okay? Wow. And money's hard to figure out. It is really hard to figure it out. It is. It is. Even when you have... An amazing business like yours that's emerging, that's profitable, that's got great revenue, and you're like, man, how do I get money to grow? Yeah. Right? So. Well, and it's like, I, I, I feel like it's like, man, it's like once you lift up the covers, like, oh, shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so, I mean, is everybody like that or is that just me? No, <laughs> totally normal. It's totally normal. By the way, by the way, one of the most uh, beautiful <laughs> things about entrepreneurs is that you have to have a little bit of um, not naivety, yeah. but you, you, you need to just not let some things get to you as much as they can because mm -hmm. they'd slow you down right. uh, too much. Yeah. So one of those is money and capital, right? Yeah. Um, you've got to be aware. You've got to have a strategy. You've got to have a plan. But ultimately, um, you know, you can't sit around and, and be paralyzed by the fact that you don't have capital. And you're not. You're not. I mean, I'm watching your business and what you're doing. So, so that kind of brings me to the next point. Yeah. You've got this emerging brand. You've got product iteration, innovation, mm -hmm. advancement, development that you want to do over the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to do this. You're committed mm -hmm. that this is going to be one of the biggest um, Western fashion brands in, in the country. Well, is that, well, is that you, know, you, know, you know what I want? I, and I believe this. I believe this with all my heart. As you know, Lincoln Electric and Miller, the brand Miller, you'll know Western Welder. You'll, and it's like we're not we're not selling welders. 
but you'll know our name yeah. because we are we are so the top leader. three brand in a multi billion dollar industry 100%. and probably the brand that people have more of an emotional connection to and are right, passionate right, about. Right, right. And Miller and Lincoln are amazing companies. They are. I know them both very well. Wow. Extraordinary companies. And um, they're but and, yeah, yeah. But I don't know that people are getting as fired up about their welding rig as they are about that good looking shirt that they're putting on to not just go to work mm -hmm. as you call the uh, welder's tuxedo, mm -hmm. but also when they're going to go hit the dance floor with their boots and their jeans, yeah. um, they're looking good in a Western welder shirt and they're proud of it. So let's talk a little bit about what you need, right? So capital is a big deal. Yeah. Um, and that means you need um, some type of a solution and strategy yeah. in the area of finance, right? Okay. You need it. And, and there's a lot of different ways that could happen. Um, amazing banks that you could work with. Yeah. Um, you could partner, you could take an investment. There's just so many different things you could do around capital. Okay. But I'm also listening to what you're saying around, hey, this, this thing's going to explode. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go in a lot of uncharted waters yeah. where I don't necessarily have a map. I've got Lewis over here who is just an answered prayer. Mm -hmm. And he's by your side. He's told you to give you five years, right? Yep. Your business is going to last a little longer than five years. Um, talk about where your void is, what else you need in your business that doesn't just have to do with capital and money, um, which that's a big part of it. But what else is there? Is there um, do you need a partner? Do you need um, to hire a bigger team? Do you what, what when you think about the business um, yeah. and, and you think about yourself? You said you feel inadequate. Um, by the way, um, Steve Jobs, at some point in his career, hired Tim Cook. Wow! Because he needed him. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think that everybody would would agree that um, Steve Jobs is the innovator. Um, to some degree, I mean, he's the founder, he's the champion, he's the man when it comes to Apple. Mm -hmm. But I think Steve Jobs would be really proud of what Tim Cook has done mm -hmm. and how he stewarded his business, mm -hmm. uh, the business of Apple of where it is today. Wow. So when you think about your business, is, um, is intellectual capital is something you need as much as capital? I think it's capital. <laughs> You think it's capital? You know what? I, uh, you know what? I, I don't. I'm not that smart. And and you know what? Sometimes I'm like Lewis. You don't know. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> but you know. So I think there's probably times where probably intellectual capital would be a value. But capital is what we need. It's Cap what you need. Capital. It's what we you need. Capital. We need capital. Yeah. And it's like. Um, I mean, it's like. Uh, I'm so confident in what I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm so confident in the products. I'm, I'm, dude, I'm So how much capital do you think you need? And let's let's talk about this. I want to, uh, this is a really important point to talk about. I mean, um, like debt. this year? Let's talk about debt. Okay. Let's talk about debt. So. What do I have? We don't have to talk about that. I'll but tell you everything, dude. To, to how much debt do you have? I think I think on the business, 778. Okay. So you got a business, so you've got the debt that you have in the business you could pay it off with one year's profits around about. Well, and, and my product sitting would probably pay it off. Absolutely. You got a lot of inventory, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you have to have inventory to sell. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about what you need when it comes to capital. So mm -hmm. you've got the, today the business is at $3 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. It's making you know somewhere close to three quarters of a million dollars a year in profit. Uh, margins are good. Um, you just got a lot going on. You want to take this thing to 35, 40, 50 million dollars is what I heard. Yeah. So you see this business being 10 to 15 times bigger than it is today 100%. from a top line perspective. Um, and the, the beautiful thing about your business, the beautiful thing is it's profitable. It's supporting your family. You're able to grow. You're able to keep going. So I don't think under any circumstances in the business that you have today that you want to give up profitability. Profitability is key. Okay. Now, people talk a lot about debt being evil. And let me tell you, the biggest, most successful acquisitions that happen of companies in the world are with structured debt. Debt's not bad. Debt is an extraordinary tool, mm -hmm. but it needs to be used at the right time. It needs to be under the right terms and the right conditions. Mm -hmm. So debt 
is definitely part of your money maze. Having a great line of working capital um, that's, that's healthy, that you're able to uh, manage, is really important. But when you think about the business, getting it to this, you know, you're at three million, let's say getting to 10 million. You've got a capital shortage. You need more cash. Mm -hmm. And you need this cash so you could buy inventory before your customers pay you for it. And as you move into the wholesale market, you're gonna have much more outflow in regards to inventory, which is cash out the door, mm -hmm. and you're gonna have longer terms. Because right now, when you sell a consumer product, how often, when do you get paid? Before it ships, right? Yeah. You get paid before it ships. Yeah. You move into wholesale, and you've got a 60, 90 day game, it's a very different business, right? Mm -hmm. So how much cash do you need? <clears throat> well, this is what Lewis tells me. He says 320, he's like, if, he's like low end, 200 doors. High end, 800, 850 doors. So let's say we get in, let's say best case scenario, we're going to two different markets. Let's say we get into 850 doors. 324 units per door Kay. on average. Kay. That's 275,000 units. Yep. Average of, I think we were saying $48. So we're looking at about, on that, that could be, that could be, the first year it could be $13 million. Okay, so $13 million, but, this, is, this is really important. But that's, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So $13 million is top line revenue divided by two because we're, you know, we're wholesale. Sure. So we're looking at about $6.6 .6 mm -hmm. but we're at a, Two, one to two stock ratio. So two thirds of that. We're going to need probably about two thirds of that times. What is it? What is two thirds in percentage? About sixty percent. Sixty-five percent. We'll just say sixty percent. So we need about four million. Okay. So four million dollars. Yeah. So you get four million dollars of cash. Yeah. That allows you to sell thirteen million dollars in product. Yeah. And on that $13 million in product, you're going to make roughly $6.5 million. So you invest $4 million in your business, and you get back $6.5 million. It's pretty good. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Right. So now you've taken $3 million in mm -hmm. revenue, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You've got $3 million in revenue, mm -hmm. and you've taken that. You're already doing $3 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. High margin, direct to consumer business. You layer on the wholesale business. Now you're doing $16 million in revenue, mm -hmm. right? Because you said $13 million in wholesale. Mm -hmm. You're doing $16 million in revenue. Let's just say on your $3 million, you're making a million. On this other piece of business you're going to sell... We figured out you're making, basically, you're making about two and a half million. So you take a business that you look forward, mm -hmm. let's just look a year forward. A year from now, if you had $4 million to spend, a year from now you have a business that's making somewhere around $3 million in profit and it's doing $16 million in revenue. Yep. Completely change the landscape of your business. 100%. Now you have a massive emerging brand, you've grown your profit by, you know, three times minimum. Yeah. And everything just continues to get bigger. Now that two and a half million dollars, that extra two and a half million dollars, three million dollars that you have in profit, you're gonna need every dollar of that because what you shipped out in four million dollars, that you needed four million dollars this year, mm -hmm. in 2024, you're probably gonna need 10 million dollars. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's the truth. It's just capital. You just need more. <laughs> so it's, yeah. So you just need more, right? So you're making money, right? But working capital is a very interesting thing. It is. And there's a lot of different ways to structure inventory. So here's the good news for you, Jordan. There are banks. There are non-shark-oriented investors, meaning there are people that will align with you, that have the same goals and same objectives, that you have for yourself, they believe in and they have, that would love to invest in your business. And that could be a loan, it could be an equity infusion, it could be a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. But see, if you could project, and this is where projections get very interesting, if the business next year could do 15 million, let's just say 15 million in revenue, yeah. uh -huh. 
this thing could model out that by 2025, 2026, you're getting pretty close to that 30 million you want to be at. Yeah. And that 30 million, you're going to have margin expansion because you're going to get lower supply cost, mm -hmm. right? You're going to get better lines of credit that come with lower cost of, of cash, mm -hmm. right? Interest mm -hmm. rates go down. Yeah. Um, going up right now, but generally would go down as things go up. So you could look up and have a business, call it three, four years from now, that's doing, let's just say, 30, 40 million in revenue that's making six, seven, eight million dollars a year. You go out to the market yeah. and you sell that company if you wanted to sell it. If you said, you know, hey, what, you know what, you know what, you know, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's like, I, I've, I've been clueless since <laughs> building this thing, I've been just building the blind. But day one, that's what I believe this thing could be, and that's what I want it to be. Yeah. I, I don't want, I mean, I don't want to live. I don't want to, I, I'm not, I mean, it's like, it is the baby, right? Yeah. You got to so, take care of it. But it's like, I, I want to sell this thing. I someday. Sell this thing. someday. At, when it's, when it, when the fruit is ripe. Right. When the fruit is ripe. You know, and I would tell you, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. You don't want to sell it when the fruit is ripe. Okay. You want to sell it. Just before? You know, no. <laughs> you want to sell it when okay. there is a ton of opportunity. Authentic, okay. legitimate, real opportunity okay. for the buyer. Okay. You want to sell them a business that they're going to be able to take to the moon. Wow. Now, they're going to need capital to do it. Wow. They're going to need more horsepower. But you want to sell it to them before all the fruit's ripe, that's for sure. But wow. the good news is you're just getting warmed up in some regards, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have an endless list of new products that you'd like to bring out. I mean, I'm hitting, I feel like I'm hitting a glass ceiling, you know, on this capital thing. That's what, that's what, that's it. And I, I don't know what, I feel like I've been praying about you a lot, dude. I've been praying about you a lot. And, and dude, I don't want to use you. I don't want to use you in any sense, you know. Um, but I know that you have a key to, to, to get me to that, where I need to go. Yeah. And whether it's with me or pointing me to a different direction, but... Um, truth matters. Everybody wants to be your friend. You're, you're, you are something else. You really are. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I, well, and I'm not trying to... I mean, you got a million guys blowing smoke up your skirt, so I get that. But... Sergey. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 and, and not just out of, like... You know, it's funny, because I've always, i always felt like I never have anything to bring to the table. I struggle with that. I've always sm felt small in my life, but I, I, I feel like... I have something to bring to the table. Like, I want to be your friend, just to be your friend. Yeah. But, um, I mean, obviously my business needs capital. Yeah. And, and hopefully in my friendship with you, you can help me. Yeah. Yeah. So, when you think about, we talked about capital. And, yeah. and uh, the easiest thing that I get to do in business, the mm -hmm. easiest thing... I get to do with entrepreneurs is to provide capital. Hmm. Um, I love to invest, and um, and and I I love to invest in entrepreneurs that I really get to know their heart and yeah. I get to know what they're about. And um, for me, it's a love story. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, not to make that sound too weird, no, um, too but but it's a it's a love story. And and uh, and I love to. To do that, but I will tell you the easiest thing for me to do is to write that check for capital, mm -hmm. um, and is what I really find that most entrepreneurs need. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, guys like yourself that have successful emerging businesses, um, it's not the capital; it's really to understand what the game is behind the game. Yeah, it's really to understand how to put the pieces together to scale your business mm -hmm. to that thirty to fifty million dollars yeah. that you're on your way to. Right. Um, the money's easy hmm. when you have a great business. Okay. So the thing that you should celebrate authentically is that you've built an extraordinary business. You have a great brand. You have a great product. You have a thriving customer base, and you have nothing but opportunity in front of you. So is what I would tell you is money, you, you, we just mapped it out a few minutes ago. Over the next three to five years, let me tell you what you're gonna need. A lot more capital. 
if you're going to get this thing to 50 million in revenue mm -hmm. and that seven eight million dollars in profit you're going to need a lot more capital right Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of ways to get capital. We talked about structured debt. We talked about equity. But we also can talk about margin expansion. Mm -hmm. We can talk about bringing new innovative products to market that give you more operating leverage in your business. There's a lot of pieces that come into play that don't just include money. Um, money is a great band-aid but it's not always the cure it's yeah. not the remedy it's not the solution yeah. and in your business you know right now in order to get from three million in revenue to 16 million in revenue rough numbers that we did you need four million bucks mm -hmm. but in 2024 you're gonna have the same problem yeah so now you're getting into strategy there's a lot more there so I think you know um, you are rock solid in building your business to where it is today mm -hmm. and you've done one of the things i love about you jordan is you've gone out and you've partnered with some mastermind programs you've listened to coaches um you're you're you are a consummate and and passionate um uh, student you're trying to learn about business i mean we talk a lot about some of the programs that you're in but you've created an enterprise you've created a business that's bigger than the next wow program that's out there you need the how yeah you need the how yeah the wow yeah. the inspiration has got you to where you are but the knowledge and the strategy is what's going to be transformational for you yeah and i think you and i were talking just the other day that you've you know you've partnered with some organizations you've invested in yourself mm -hmm. and your business mm -hmm. with some organizations that do a really good job of getting you fired up. But that only goes so far. By the way, you don't come across as a guy to me that needs to be encouraged to get fired up. You're pretty damn fired up, right? So as you take this business, you got this business to where it is today, to where you're a leading brand in a multi-billion dollar industry, you have a hot product, you've got it to where it is, off of tenacity, drive, and just a lot of great entrepreneurial traits. But what's gonna get this business from $3 million in revenue to 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 mm -hmm. is gonna be a really different game. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be strategic. Um, capital is definitely something you need, but capital isn't all that you need. Yeah. It's just not. Do you see that? Oh, yeah. I mean, how do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> How do you do it? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, honest, honestly, like, like I have so many ideas, but and and I, it, thank, I mean, fortunately, and thank God for Lewis, he sees what I see. Yeah. But um, I mean, I mean, you have an army around you. That's amazing. How do you? I mean. How do you create that to where each man feels happy to be here? Yeah. That's and that's something I, I worry about. I worry about it's like, man, is he does he have enough? Do they have enough? Is he happy? Does he it's like I worry about so many little things and it almost hamstrings me. Yeah. I wor it's like I'm worried about my my, my manufacturer Joe. Uh, it's like, man, is he happy with his margins? It's like, is he actually making money? It's like, I mean, like, and I like I, these these things are like anxieties built up in me. You know what I mean? It's like, and it's like it's constantly like this battle of like, you don't. It's it's crazy because everything's on the fly. You don't know. You're just winging things. Have you noticed that? It's like I feel I feel like that inside. Obviously, yeah. there's there's so many things you're, you you feel like I, I know my margins have to be here. I know my margins have to be this. This has to be this. But it's like, how do you how do you keep the whole thing floating to where it's all functioning and working? So, I love this question, yeah. I lo and I love your transparency and authenticity. Right. Yeah. So, I don't want to repeat myself, but yeah. You've spent the last five years building this business. Mm -hmm. It's making your family almost a million dollars a year in profit. 
you've built it to many million dollars in revenue, you've got this emerging product, you know you need capital, but the brilliance of what you understand the most is you need a guide. Yeah. You need a guide. You need somebody that's gonna help you navigate. And let me tell you, the best guides that you're ever gonna have in your life are people that have been there. And you talked about how I'm surrounded by an army. Every ounce of business success that I've had that has been um, a multiplier Mm -hmm. has been because I have had amazing people around me that have poured into me, that have guided me, that have helped me. And the challenge that happens in this business advice world today is you've got these false gurus. Mm -hmm. They're gurus. Yeah. And they and they um, they talk a lot about wow, not a lot about how. So, my passion, what I love more than anything, is to share fundamental business practices with guys like you and ladies that are starting or developing or growing businesses that help them absolutely leapfrog the long process of beating your head against the wall when you're trying to scale and grow a business. So, you know, if you, if you ask me right now how to get to the moon, I have no idea. I don't have a map. Um, we probably need to call Elon. <laughs> We're gonna have to figure it out. I don't know how to get to the moon. Yeah. If you ask me how to scale and grow and develop a business, it's something that I've done time and time again in my life because I've had the great privilege of sitting at the table with some of the best business minds in the world that I have either pulled advice out of, real authentic tactical advice, or I've paid really close attention to what they're doing and know how to deploy it. So here's the good news for you. I'm not a guru. Mm -hmm. I'm not at all. I don't think I'm anything more than a conveyor of... um, a conveyor with a ton of gratitude of guidance and coaching that I've gotten from some of the best business minds on earth. And so when I look at your business, you've done the hard part. You invented a product. You are an innovator. You have millions of dollars in revenue. You have huge profits. You've got an extraordinary family. You're a healthy young man. I could go on forever. You've done the hard part. The blueprint to take your business from here to the moon is not that complicated. It's been done before. Mm -hmm. My point is the map exists. Mm -hmm. The map exists, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think we have a map exactly on how you and I could get to the moon right now. Yeah. We have a map right now on how to scale your business from $3 million to $50 million, Mm -hmm. right? It's not complicated. There's some complexities, Mm -hmm. but it's not complicated. Mm -hmm. So the reality of it is, is that, you know, I I have, I have uh, some great people in my life that share great things with me. Yeah. And, and um, a great friend of mine shared with me not too long ago that the core of being an entrepreneur is mystery. As a matter of fact, if you knew everything that was going to happen, you probably wouldn't be an entrepreneur. The fuel, the passion, the fire, the drive is the mystery of what's going to happen next, right? And you think about when you got started. Did you know you'd be here today? No. No clue, right? You've built a multi-million dollar business and a brand that an industry loves and admires. You had no idea. You had a vision, you had dreams, you had passion but there's been a lot of mystery along the way. And you can't take the mystery out of being an entrepreneur. You can't take it away. It's what fuels us. It's what's exciting, what's next, right? I mean, you're sitting here saying, I wanna get this thing to 30, $50 million a year. But the reality of it is you don't know what the mystery is. Hmm. But there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle that don't have to be a mystery because they've been done. Hmm. They've been proven. Hmm. They've acted out. So the reality of it is that for you, um, there's nothing that's going to allow you to be more successful than being surrounded by a community of fellow like-minded, powerful entrepreneurs 
that are experiencing some of the same things that you want to experience because they have the map they have the guide they've been there they've done it you know you know the terminology iron sharpens iron mm -hmm. i mean i think you know jesus was an amazing entrepreneur would you agree 100 percent. Um, unbelievable did that guy face adversity trials tribulations ultimately crucifixion but that's like, you really think about entrepreneurialism, and there's a lot of mystery, but you have to have faith, right? And the yeah. faith ultimately in business that you're going to have um, is going to be, you know, around your own capabilities, but it's also going to be around being around people that make up a community that are like-minded, that are going to help you get to where you want to be. And I'm not saying that for film or recording or tape. That's the deal, man. So is what you really need is access. You really need access to people that have been there and done it, that can help guide you through it, that can be your partner, that can lock arms with you. And, you know, there's, I look at TV shows like Shark Tank. I love business. I love entrepreneurs. I cringe when I watch Shark Tank. Oh, yeah. I've, yeah. I mean, I watch Shark Tank religiously. Yeah. And yeah. Every day. Like, it's funny. When I started, I was like, man, I would just love to have a deal. And then now I'm where I'm at. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so you know what the tragedy is? One of the sharks, I won't say his name, came out last week with an announcement that he's down overall in all the Shark Tank investments. Hmm. So the shark is losing. The shark's losing. And let me tell you, that means both sides are losing. So the reality of it is, you don't want to engineer the solution for your business with a shark. Mm -hmm. You want to engineer and align the opportunity that you have with your business, with people that can help you, that can advance you, that are guides, that are going to support you, that are going to endorse you, that are going to help you make moves that are good for your business for the long term. Yeah. Right? That's what you want. Yeah. And you're just not going to get that from the sharks. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. Like... Capital and money and funding and, and cash flow and working capital um, is really, really important. Mm -hmm. But I know your business. I've heard your story. I have your product. Bro, is what you need is you need guides that can help you make the next move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have a lot of people in business are sitting here with a hope and a dream and a vision. Yeah. But they don't have three million in revenues and, you know, three quarters of a million dollars in profit. Yeah. They don't they don't have that. Like you've got you're in a great spot. Hmm. So you you know, I would encourage you to have gratitude for where you are. I, I tell you what, man, and by the like, way, I will never just give you capital. I'm the worst bank on earth. I'm a I'm a, I told you that the first time we talked. I am a shitty bank. I charge like seventy percent interest. <laughs> no, I mean I really am like I'm a bad bank. I don't want to be a bank. Yeah. I want to be a business partner. Yeah. I want to invest intellectual capital right along the side of my capital. I mean, I'm just not, there's a lot of guys that would love to come in, give you money, create terms that if things don't work out exactly as you're saying they're going to, they end up with your business. Yeah. Right? And right. you're smart enough to stay away from those guys, but I'll just tell you, you and I, I'll never be an investor in your business as a passive blind investor. I'm a horrible hmm. passive blind investor. I'm no good. Well, like that, if, you're, you know, if you were like, Vic, man, can you just give me half a million bucks so I can get this thing going? Hell no. The answer is no. My passion and the other investors that I have a chance to partner with and represent are digging into a business and helping people scale it and take it to the moon. Hmm. The reality of it is we're highly selective where we do that. Yeah. Highly selective. At the end of the day, if somebody invests in Western, Western Welder, mm -hmm. truth, if they invest, what are they investing in? Today. I mean, wait, what? I've had a little drink. Wait, what? <laughs> if, a, if somebody invests in Western Welder, mm -hmm. what are they investing in? I'm going to answer the question okay, for you. Okay, yeah, okay. They're only investing in one thing, man. That's okay. it. You. Yeah. 
You get yeah. hit by a train tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. And I'd prefer that didn't happen. And I appreciate your ambition, your passion, your three million in revenue, your three, you know, your seven hundred million or seven hundred thousand in profit, whatever the numbers are. Yeah. It's all shit without you. Yeah, yeah. So no matter who invests in you, invest in Western Welder, they're investing in you. Mm -hmm. But here is the opportunity. The opportunity is you've got to build a business that has enterprise value that's bigger and stronger and faster than you are. Hmm. You're going to end up with a nice little business that provides you and your family with income and you sell a cool product until you build enterprise value. And the definition of enterprise value is that Jordan Beeman is not the guy that the business has to be dependent on 24-7, 365. Wow. Wow. Man, I, I, I just, I, I, I want to tell you this, man. I mean, that's what I want. That's what I want really, really bad. I want, I want to build enterprise value. You told me, when we talked about that the other night at the bar, it's like, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I honestly, it's like, I, I mean, I, I've been freaked out talking to you. What what do you mean by that? I mean, you're this super powerful like entrepreneur that's got oodles and goodles of money, and I don't know what your intentions are. When I first met you, I felt really really intimidated by you. Really? Really? Do you feel by intimidated you. by me now? No. You shouldn't. No. I, I mean, I, honestly, though, do you? you know, no. I don't, I don't want you I don't. to. In my heart, I don't and, want and, you to. No, and I don't. And, and to your original offer, it's like, I was super, like, I felt like, I mean, like, what's, what does that mean? What are you going to do to me? Yeah. I mean, what does it, what, what does that mean? And you know what? Honestly, honestly, where I'm at right now, I mean, I would give, <laughs> I mean, I would, if, 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 let's say, let's say the paint the perfect picture. Let's say in five years, we're, let's say 36 million in revenue. Mm-hmm. And that partner helped me get there. What's that worth? Oh, I'd give thirty percent. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's a super that's a super scary thing though. Yeah. Well, let it's me like, let me let me just tell you this. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people have offered to give me part of their business. Mm -hmm. But I do believe as an entrepreneur that. Commitment and passion and authenticity is an investment, not a gift. And yeah. so, you know, I, I'm seriously. I mean, I, I, as a matter of fact, there's there are men sitting around this campfire right now that have personally witnessed people offering to give me 50% of pretty remarkable businesses. Just give it to me. But the reality is I'm not in the business of accepting gifts of free business because any entrepreneur in the world that is willing to, to gift or give away any equity in their business that has a viable business that's not just a liability deserves to have a world-class business partner. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I only have so much capacity, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And, and really don't like to let people down. So the reality of it is good news for you, and I know you were just using that as an example. I'm not interested in, in a free 30% of your business, but because I love entrepreneurs and I've gotten to know you and your heart, I'm telling you right now, brother, I'm gonna help you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it valuable, please watch this next one. I think you're gonna love it.